In 1908 in Montana, paleontologists uncovered this, the remains of a sharp-toothed carnivorous dinosaur. At the time, it was the largest one ever discovered. They called it Tyrannosaurus rex. Today, it's mounted here. Well, some of it is, because they didn't find a full dinosaur in 1908. What they found was the skull, most of the tail, the ribcage, pelvis, and most of the vertebrae. But the rest of what you're seeing here, it's man-made. And that's true for most dinosaur exhibits. When paleontologists uncover the bones of a dinosaur, they usually only find part of it, leaving them with a prehistoric puzzle full of missing pieces. So how do they fill in the blanks? When we first started mounting dinosaurs in the 1900s, researchers had to make a lot of educated guesses. The first step was to get the bones they did have in the right places. And one thing that helped is to look at animals that exist now. We can just look at this Tyrannosaurus rex and we can see a lot of characteristics on it that are present in like chickens, for instance. Dr. Mark Norell runs the paleontology division at the American Museum of Natural History. If you look at the feet, it has three primary toes that all face forward. It has an S-shaped neck. It carries its backbone parallel to the ground. And from there, they had to start filling in the missing pieces. For this T-Rex, both hind limbs and both front limbs were missing. But judging by the skeleton, researchers determined it was closely related to an Allosaurus. So an artist was commissioned to hand carve the missing pieces, using the Allosaurus skeleton as a reference. Years later, they'd be replaced by replicas of real T-Rex bones. It turned out that T-Rex feet do look a lot like Allosaurus feet. But there were other times this kind of guesswork didn't work out so well. This long-necked dinosaur is called an Apatosaurus, but for a long time, we called it something else. When researchers originally discovered it, it was missing its skull, so they made it one. But they made the skull based on some bad assumptions. They made the skull look like a Camarasaurus, which is a very different group of dinosaurs. So it has a very high domed skull. So they put the Camarasaurus skull on the Apatosaurus body and gave the new dinosaur a name, Brontosaurus. The error was finally corrected in the 1970s. The skull was replaced with a new, more accurate version, and Brontosaurus was renamed Apatosaurus. But today, I can confidently walk you through the fossil hall in a museum and say these skeletons are 99 to 100% accurate, because designing exhibits now, it has very little to do with guesswork. Today, the field of paleontology has exploded to the point where we're uncovering almost one new dinosaur species a week. Today, that there's more dinosaur paleontologists than there ever have been, there's more dinosaurs being discovered than there have been at a quicker rate each year. And with more dinosaurs comes more accurate exhibits. While we still haven't found a fully intact T-Rex, we now have the information to build one. When I first got my job here 30 years ago, that there was about 10 T-Rexes known, and now there's 46. So if we just put all those together, we know what the whole skeleton looks like. So this T-Rex is ultimately kind of a Frankenstein monster. The pieces used to complete it were copied from various other T-Rexes. And finally, in special cases like Sue, an exceptionally large T-Rex on display in the Field Museum, researchers use computers to scan and mirror limbs. As in, if they have the left leg, they essentially flip it to create the right leg of the same size. It's efficient and precise work. In other words, it's highly unlikely you'll stumble across a dinosaur with the wrong head today because even though dinosaur skeletons don't show up in one piece, there's no longer a lot of mystery around how they're supposed to look. Take a look at Norrell's newest exhibit at the Museum of Natural History, and you can see that today, dinosaur researchers have moved on from the skeleton to asking other questions about T-Rex. How did it move? How did it grow? How did it live? Now we work with everything from uh, neurobiologists to material scientists to uh, engineers just to you know, do some of the work on these things. And that's pretty much a new thing. I mean, 30 years ago, that really wouldn't have happened. In this case, Norell and his team have reconstructed full models of the enormous predator that are more lifelike than ever before. So why are we even piecing together skeletons anymore? Why not just display what's actually found? Paleontologists say that it's because exhibits aren't just about boasting discoveries. When you make an exhibit, you have to tell a story. And that story isn't about how humans found some fossils in 1908. It's the story of a living animal that walked the Earth millions of years before us.
In this video, I briefly mentioned a time when scientists stuck the wrong head on a dinosaur and mislabeled it Brontosaurus. And while I didn't have time to fully explore that topic in this video, I wanted a quick and easy way to compile some of the research around the debate on whether Brontosaurus ever existed. So I created a website with Wix, where I could easily organize some of the theories. It's a super easy way to create a website. Click on the link below to make your own. Wix doesn't directly impact our editorial, but their support does make videos like this one possible. So go check them out.